like the eggs that crack up and finally take the shape of an omelette or a sunny side up, our heads do crack up in the event of an accident or a fall. That is why it is mandatory to wear helmets when you're riding a motorcycle. Helmets come in different shapes and sizes. And in this episode of Motown India Show, we are going to talk about helmets that are good and helmets that are bad. IS4151 is the standard mark for an Indian helmet and is governed by the provisions of the Bureau of Indian Standards Act 1986 and the rules and regulations made thereunder. Mind you, the helmets covered by this standard are not intended for high-speed competitive events. In this episode of Motown India Show, we are not going to talk about people's habits pertaining to wearing of helmets, rather about the helmet itself. Helmets are built to withstand certain falls. They are supposed to be strong, should absorb shock and eventually save the head from fatal accidents. Many disabling injuries can be prevented by wearing a helmet. When you are wearing a helmet during a fall or crash, the force of impact is distributed over the surface of the helmet rather than concentrated on the head. Experts say a motorcycle helmet generally has a life of around 5 years or around 3 years if used regularly. Four basic components work together to provide protection in the motorcycle helmet. An outer shell, an impact absorbing liner, the comfort padding and a good retention system. Both the shell and the liner compress if hit hard, spreading the forces of impact throughout the helmet material. The more impact energy deflected or absorbed, the less there is of it to reach your head and brain and to do damage. Some helmet shells delaminate on impact, while others may crack and break. These are ways a helmet acts to absorb shock. The helmet has done its job and it needs to be replaced. The comfort padding is the soft foam and cloth layer that sits next to your head. The retention system or chin strap is one piece that keeps the helmet on your head in a crash. Now we're going to break some helmets, some of them branded and some of them local ones. And by the way, this sledgehammer weighs 6.6 .6 kilos and this hand, die kilo. I was just joking. Two is an unbranded helmet and let's see how this goes. This is a branded uh, helmet and let's see how this takes the impact. That's awesome. Now that's the difference between a branded, it's taken the shock, its shell is strong, and it's amazing, it's amazing. Now, this is what you call the difference between a branded and a non-branded one. Wow, oh, it's taking the impact, it's protected the head to a great extent. Another of the branded ones, let's see how this moves. Tough nut, that's amazing. This is amazing. Give it me, let me give it another try. Did you see that? This is, this is beautiful. This has absorbed the impact of the fall. It's gone inside and this, and the head is safe. Here we go. This is also another good brand. And then uh, let's see how this fares. Did you see that? Did you see that? Wow. It's great. Vice is perfect. Another one. 
Here we go. Stick in the impact on the head. It's rock solid. Great comfort inside. These are fast. So what we had set out to prove was that one should not wear unbranded helmets, especially in India, on Indian roads and Indian driving conditions. You just saw how they crumbled in front of the first impact. But for the branded ones, they absorbed the shock, the inner linings absorbed the shock, and eventually it was safe. So please wear branded helmets. And the helmets which we tested were from Steelberg, from Vega, and from Studs. All three of them cleared the test with flying colors. So don't end up being a Kanjus fellow and buy a local fellow for around 200, 100, 300 rupees. These branded ones cost as low as 600, 700 upwards to 2,000, 3,000. And it is your head which is more important and the head of the pillion rider, the rider and the pillion rider. So ride safe, don't be insensible, don't be stupid and don't end up like this. Strong fellow.